may the great God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, bless you this day. It's somewhere around uh, 7.30 where I'm sitting here in, in Utah. <clears throat> and I pray that God will bless your day as you go out to meet the challenges in this life. And most certainly you will meet some challenges. But pray and ask God to help you. Lean on Him and not on you. Lean on His understanding and not your understanding. The Bible says He will lead you and guide you in all your ways. So we want to trust Him and believe in Him for this day. Amen. Happens to be Father's Day today. So, happy Father's Day to all you great fathers out there. And if you're not a great father, start being one. Your children need you to be a great father. Get in Jesus. Get stabilized in the Lord. And let Him, let him help you get through this life. Raising your family. Your family can look at you as a great father. So happy, happy Father's Day. I want to read some scripture here this morning. It's found in the book of Ephesians in the New Testament. And it's the fourth chapter. Uh, begin reading. Begin reading at the the first verse. This is the great Apostle Paul. Uh, he wrote he wrote a lot of books, probably like maybe two thirds of the New Testament. I think he wrote out of the twenty six books. I think he wrote around, I'm not sure, but I think I remember 13 books. But anyways, this is his writings to the church at Ephesus. Ephesus was on the west side of what we call Turkey today. It was on the west, the west side, almost to the coastline, as most of the seven churches of Asia was, was located there. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Beseech. I looked that word up one time, long years ago. But uh, I think it means he's begging, he's begging them to walk worthy of the vocation. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Okay, we're to be we'll be we're to be uh, lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another. The scripture teaches us in love. Jesus said by, he told the disciples before he went back to heaven that he, uh, to love one another. He said, by your love, you'll show the world that you are his disciples. So he taught them to, to be long-suffering and patient, forbearing, you know, and walking worthy, uh, be meekness. Uh, uh, <clears throat> let those be the signs that you're a, you're a Christian. You know, don't be hot-headed. Don't fly off the handle. Don't be critical. My morning coffee. So, we're a... 
were to have, uh, it says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We want unity, don't we? And we most definitely want peace. So we have to endeavor, the Bible says. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, uh, and one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, uh, when he ascended up on high, uh, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts, lower parts of the earth? Just talking about Jesus descending and doing all that the Father bid him to do. He he was a very busy man and he had a lot to do. But when he ascended and he come into this world uh, through the birth of the of the Virgin Mary, uh, he said he must be about his father's business. Remember what he told his mom and, and his Mary and Joseph? They couldn't find him. So they went looking for him. And he said, uh, and they asked him, what, what are you doing? Where where'd you go? What you been doing? We've been looking for you. I kind of think they're a little bit perturbed with him. But he told them, wished you not, that I must be about my father's business. Now, Joseph wasn't his father in this instance. His father in this instance was, uh, was Yahweh, God, sent him on a mission. You might say Jesus was an ambassador from heaven. <laughs> you know, and I believe you could say that and be be okay with the scriptures but he had he he come into the world on a mission and uh so he he descended into the world and uh he had a he had an agenda he had things that he had to do uh, you know, he had to, certain things had to be done. He said all the things that, that are written in him, in the, in the law, and the prophets, and the Psalms, they had to be fulfilled. So he was, he was busy when he ascended, uh, or descended down here. And he walked among us somewhere between 30, 33 years. Depends on what word study you do. But uh, he gathered together the 12 disciples. And if you read the Bible longer than 15 minutes, you know he had 12 disciples. And that he chose those 12 <laughs> To be with him, and he was gonna. He was gonna. <coughs> excuse me. He was gonna teach them what it was that he brought from heaven, and and through those teachings, and through the the. The, the wisdom that he displayed toward them, 
they would become the first members of his church. But they they had to work with him and be with him, and they did, and they, you know, they learned a lot by just watching him. You know, he was trying to convince them, you know, that he was the Messiah. <coughs> Boy, I got a little cough this morning. So he organized the church. He called them onto the mountain uh, and ordained them and gave them power. Matthew, Mark, Matthew 10, Mark 6, and Luke, uh, Mark 3, and Luke 6. All three out of the four gospel writers record uh, that event, which even today it's not understood in context. Because if, if he, if they understood that, then they wouldn't no longer teach that the church started on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down and filled every one of them and they all spoke in other tongues. They wouldn't teach that as the beginning of the church. They would teach that as the day that the church was filled with power from on high. Not that it was the beginning of the church. Because the beginning of the church is then just like I said, you can go read it in all three of them Gospels. And he goeth up unto a mountain, he called unto him whom he would, and there he ordained twelve that they may be with him, and he gave them power. In other words, he gave them authority to do the work of the church. So he was a busy man. He wasn't, he wasn't, uh, he did everything on time. Uh, they stood there at the gravesite of Lazarus, and Lazarus had been dead four days. And uh, he told them to remove the stone that was blocking the entranceway uh, of Lazarus, because Lazarus was the would soon be getting up and coming out of that grave. And so Jesus told him, uh, move the stone. Get it out of the way. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible said, and the dead came forward. Lazarus came out of the tomb back to life again. He, uh, you know, he was busy. Man, how many times did he open up the eyes of the blind? How many, how many uh, people that had died did he raise back to life? Uh, the lepers were cleansed, and and I mean, you know, there was just so much, you know, that that the that the master did while he was here, because he descended into this world to bring God. And introduce God to this world. Okay. He hears the words of God. And he teaches us about God. And he was a living. Uh, he said if you've seen me. You've seen the Father. Because I and the Father are one. That don't mean they're two God. They're still one God. But they're one in unity. One in closeness. And so, but he, he, when he came down, he had a he had to get everything ready for him to ascend back up. Now there's a scripture right here. It says, uh, in verse nine, that he ascended. What is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Now, most people will teach 
the lower parts of the earth is he went down into in the underworld. Some say he went into hell. Some says different things oh, about that, but I don't know where the scripture is right now, but uh, uh, it's in Isaiah somewhere, and Isaiah refers to the lower parts of the earth that Jesus descended down into as this earth. Now, one day I might have to be corrected on this, but I hope not. But the way the Hebrews looked at it, the Jewish writers, the, the, there was dip, the, the lowest part of the earth is you get through the atmosphere, the stars, you get through the atmosphere, and then you get to the lowest part. <coughs> and that's how they looked at the lower parts of the earth. Now, <coughs> that might be wrong, but I don't think it is. So when he descended down to the earth, which does make sense, because it was to this earth that he came to be about his father's business, Okay, he, he, he came here to fulfill the scriptures and the things that were written, written of him in the, in the law and the prophets and in the Psalms. As you've heard me say, the Psalms, people don't look at Psalms, a lot of people Look at Psalms as comforting scriptures, and they are. I love the book of Psalms. Uh, but the book of Psalms is loaded with prophecy. Absolutely.